What if you were asked to launch a rescue mission in Jurassic Park? I think we're being hunted. Oh boy. Run! Well, hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. I am your host, Aaron, and I wanna have some fun with you today and kind of step outside the box and let's discuss if you were placed in the fictitious world of Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, you know, the most recent one, Fallen Kingdom, has just dropped on video and streaming services. And what if you knew that there were people out there lost and trying to survive on Isla Sorna or Isla Nubla? It doesn't matter. Each island, site A, site B, and you've got to go in, find them, rescue them, call in an evac, and get out of Dodge. What would you carry? What would you take? What would be in your rescue kit? So I want to break down for you what I would take and why. And throughout this video, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts as well in the comments below on what you would take on your rescue mission to Jurassic Park. So let's go ahead and break these items down. Here we are in Rescue Op HQ. We're gonna finish our loadout. We're gonna jump on the helo and we're gonna get into the thick of things with those dinosaurs and try and get those people out of there. But before we do that, let's go ahead and load up. So first I wanna hit packs with you real quick. Uh, this is the packs that I would go with. The 511 Rush series and the Two Banger series from 511 as well. These are the two reasons. First off, for the Rush series, the very first packs developed by 511, they have been around the world, they've been all over the place, bomb proof, and they don't have any external water bottles. Now, if I was to water bottle pouches, if I was to be hiking, backpacking, whatever, I would prefer external water bottle pouches. But if I'm running from dinosaurs, I'm falling down, tripping over stuff, trying to run for my life, I want my water contained inside the pack, not bouncing around outside that if I lose a Nalgene, I am out of water. That would be a very bad scenario, but tough, bomb-proof, well-organized, and no external water bottle pouches. I'm gonna be taking the Rush 12 with me, depending on gear loadout. Maybe if we have the guy with the rocket launcher or the minigun or the radio guy, they may wanna go with the Rush 24. I don't see a need for the Rush 72. We're not planning on being there long, and we're not planning on camping out. We're planning on getting in, uh, trying to find our lost people, and then get out as soon as possible and call the evac in. So that's the pack. Now this pack is extremely important, this two banger right here. I've been using this at the range, training with it. I am in love with it. Uh, we'll do a separate video in the future on this bag. But uh, what I love about this is that this is a front carrying pouch that I can run as fast as I can with it. And it's not gonna bounce around, flop all over the place. It's not cumbersome and it's on the front of me, not the back of me or on the side, which is great. Uh, and it's kind of a last bit survival kit in case this thing gets dumped because from based off of our recon footage from all of the last recon trips you know uh, Jurassic Park Lost World 3 uh, Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom we see a lot of times people start out with packs but by the time the recon footage is over we have not seen them carrying their packs any longer there's a high probability you might dump it if you're getting chased by a t-rex so you need a backup system that's on your body and that you could run for your life and not be loaded down so this system carries uh with me four of my rifle mags that we'll get into a little later two backup pistol mags my medical systems, I have a backup flashlight, my main multi-tool, uh, some illumination, medical supplies, and some backup food supplies so that if I have to, I could literally live out of this thing if I dump my pack for some reason or a raptor grabs onto me and rips it off and I, this is all I have left. So not only do I have quick access to my ammo, my medical supplies, but also some food items, which is major in this scenario. All right, let's talk blades. Load out for the blades. You gotta have a good field knife that can work as a tactical knife. Prather War Buoy from Tops, And we gotta have a good backup pocket knife. It's a toss up between a Hogue and a Gerber. All right, the main reason I'm going with this Prather War Buoy is not only is it extremely well balanced, it's basically the design of a T-Rex claw. Great, large, high grind for field work, but a massive clip with strong tip for last ditch if a Velociraptor or other predatorial dinosaur is upon me, I might be able to pull it out and get a good stick in, one or two sticks from this, and that dinosaur is going to be dead. Massive high traction, great handle ergonomics, USA made, easy to resharpen out in the field, 
with that good relief edge and actually is big enough that I can use as a light machete if I need to with that almost eight inch overall design. Now as a backup, I gotta have a knife that I will not only be able to defend myself with, but also do field craft if I had to field work. So the Gerber Auto 06, 06 Auto, amazing tool, great handle ergonomics, S30V, the, the manipulation of the knife is a big thing because, you know, in a high stress environment, your manipulation um, and your uh, motor skills go down. So you want uh, max motor, motor skills, not having to do micro motor skills. So this guy pulling out, hitting a button, boom, I got huge traction so I can stab if I have to, but still designed in such a way that I can do field work if I need to. And then it's a toss up between this guy and either a manual or an auto in the Hogue. EX03, very similar size, large blades, high wide grind, deep guard there, so I am able to stab if I have to. Good strong push button lock up, lightweight, feels really good in the hand. I can absolutely do field work or stabbing if I need to. So I'm open to recommendations. You guys tell me in the comments below, which one would you take oh, if you only had these two to choose from? Auto 06, 06 Auto, or the Hogue. And manual or auto with this design. Gotta have a good toolkit because we're gonna be dealing with a lot of electrical, fencing, locks, all kinds of different things that we've got to take care of. So what's in the toolkit? All right, what about tools? Let's talk about tools here for just a second. Very important. Good medium-sized crowbar. You know, some of the metal doors, gates, whatever, may be rusted out, last ditch, you know, um, self-defense tool if I need to. This is gonna be very important because we are gonna probably come into to, um, depowered items that don't have powered doors and things like that. And I'm gonna have to jimmy them open and pry them open. And I wanna save my knife and not have to do that if at all possible. Then we are gonna be running into a lot of electrical stuff, regardless if I'm having to rewire a radio or possibly rewire um, a paddock, you know, and open up a paddock to uh, either release dinosaurs, uh, save my own life, you know, whatever it may be. Um, test for electrified fences, is a fence electrified or not? So a lot of that type of stuff. So I'm gonna go with my Greenlee tester kit back from when I was an electrician before I started saving people out of Jurassic Park. And I'm gonna have three different ways to test voltage and test whether or not there is um, a current going through, regardless if it is, again, radio technology or um, powered fences so I don't grab onto a fence that maybe is still electrified. This is majorly important for what we're about to do. And to help me rewire those things, you gotta have a good insulated pair of clines. So I'm gonna be using my old electrician clines that I used to use a lot and have seen a lot of love and use and have served me extremely well. So not only can I cut through wire, but I can um, cut through electrical fence if I have to, different things like that and help myself in that capacity. And then you gotta go with a multi-tool. I will be carrying this on that um, two banger from 511 on my front a good Leatherman tool. This thing is bomb proof. It's in my opinion, basically the strongest tool Leatherman makes, the Super Tool 300. It is got not only the needle nose that I will need, it's not insulated, so I gotta be careful not to use that against uh, electrified things, but lots of backup tools, screwdrivers, you know, um, uh, different cutters, different things like that, uh, punch that I may need for not only medical um, situations to pull out, you know, possibly a dinosaur tooth that got lodged in a, in a wound or something like that. So Super Tool 300 is the, the multi-tool that I'm going with. And finally, I'm going to have uh, the crew bring it over for me is uh, the compact foldable uh, bolt cutters. I've got to have that in case there is a locked gate that none of these tools are going to be able to help me with a, a heavy duty padlock so that I can break through that. Or if we come against heavy duty fence, we can cut through the fence. So bolt cutters are a must. We are going to go with the lightest, most compact ones that we can that we weigh for not only compactability and weight, but also being able to open as much as we think possible. And guys, I want to remind you, if you're loading out and you're forgetting something on this list, just check out the hyperlinks that we have below for you not only over to Amazon, but Blade HQ as well, where I will have lists for all of the gear that we're loading up with so that if you're missing an item, you can add it to your Jurassic Park rescue kit. So links below helps us out, make content and get out there just like this. And don't forget about your knock around sunglasses. We're going to be out there in the Costa Rican jungle. My GI Joe versions tend to blend very perfectly, really well with a Jurassic Park theme. So check out those hyperlinks 
as well over to knock around sunglasses so you can have that good eye protection when we're out there in the heat. Okay, let's look at illumination. We gotta have handheld illumination. We gotta have a lantern with SOS beacon. That is a must. Gotta have the glow sticks, a huge pack of glow sticks and hand crank solar powered flashlight as well as a backup. All right, so the PolyTac here, I use as not only a weapon light as I stated, and it is gonna use CR123 batteries, but I am gonna carry some spares on that. The good thing is that it's polymer, it's lightweight, it's gonna give me a really good throw, really good beam, gonna give me strobe features that possibly disorient dinosaurs or possibly get um, a locator on myself if I need uh, help. And then it does also have a low beam as well. So if I need extended battery life, I can use this. Or if I'm sneaking through different environments, I don't want high beam loca location, meaning bringing you know, um, dinosaur eyes to me, then I do have that option as well. I am gonna carry two of these, one on my firearm, one on my body in the bag that we looked at just a few moments ago. And the reason I'm going with the Streamlight Siege is not only the fact that it is compact, it is lightweight, it's gonna run on three AA batteries. I will bring some spares for me. It has long battery life if need be. It does have multiple attachment points in case I have to hang it in certain locations. Uh, it is, again, that flotation device. So if we're in a water environment on a ship or something like that, I'm not as worried about um, water damage, but also being able to use the three different settings and then the SOS feature is gonna be a major help if the radio frequencies are not working or the radios are down for some reason or everyone else got eaten and I have to get a visual signal to either an offshore ship or to uh, the rescue helicopter. Glow sticks are a must. Again, not only for signaling, but uh, laying tracks if I need to follow a certain direction through one of the larger compounds. If we're looking in the you know, multiple corridors, I can use it for that. And if all battery power goes out, at least I'll have these for about 12 hours and can get me through a day or a night of uh, darkness if I need to. So I am gonna carry about six of these guys. Then finally, have had a lot of reliability in my own life with this guy. In rather inexpensive, rather lightweight, not a huge um, high powered light, but that's okay if I'm down to this and I'm still trapped out there for an extended period of time. This is the like last ditch. Everybody left me and I've got to try and you know recall in some, some backup and I might be out there a week or two and I burn through all my batteries and my glow sticks. Then this being not only solar powered, but also hand crank and giving me a lot of different not only identification blinking, but then settings is gonna be a really good backup for me. Okay, how about medical supplies? Now, we're gonna be running into dinosaurs with massive claws, teeth, it's gonna get nasty. If we run into um, those type of dinosaurs, there's gonna be limbs being removed, bleeding out, those type of injuries, massive gashes. So we're gonna need lots of blood clotting material and lots of tourniquets and massive um, you know, large wound type of medical supplies. So uh, on my front kit that we just have recently talked about, I'm gonna make sure that I have quick access to a cat tourniquet right away so that I can use that either to myself or use it on a teammate. Then in the front pouch here, not only do I have blood clotting material with the Cellox right there, but then I have a massive um, bandage that I, will be a compress if need be. And then I have a SWAT T tourniquet that'll work as either a backup tourniquet and or compression bandage if I need to. That will be on my body, so short of me being destroyed by a dinosaur, uh, I will have quick access to those items. And then in my um, rush pack, I will have two to three more of these items that I've just shared, two or three more tourniquets, two or three more SWAT, two or three more bandages, blood clotting material, and to make sure that I have two or three of these Israeli bandages uh, in the pack as well to, for really good compress if there are um, uh, other types of wounds that would need a compress and not necessarily a tourniquet, but that is a must. We gotta have that and dis disinfectant material as well to make sure that the injuries don't um, cause, become life-threatening uh, quickly because of the large gashes and bacteria that will be on either di the dinosaur's teeth or on their claws. All right, food and water. You guys stay hydrated. You gotta have energy. For me, the last time I was in the jungle environment of Cambodia, I knew what I needed to have. I'm assuming that the Costa Rican jungle islands are gonna be no different in humidity and sweating and all of that. So for me, what I'm carrying is at least one 48 ounce Nalgene bottle 
with a human gear cap it just makes it a little easier for me to, to not miss any pour out and I can still totally open this thing up and get you know full access if I'm scooping up water, dirty water. Uh, I am gonna do a cup just as a backup in case I have to boil water, but I don't wanna start a fire if at all possible, and I'm not gonna be bringing any sort of fuel canisters or anything like that. I'm just not gonna have time, right? I mean, we're running and gunning, trying to find people and get out of Dodge. We're not going on safari or on a camping trip here. So this is only as an emergency backup. For me, cleaning water will be with my iodine purification tablet so that I can just scoop and go because we know from our recon videos that there's always water around um, on these islands. So that's a, a no brainer there. And then just tons of on the go food. I'm not going to have time to cook, you know, uh, a wholesome meal. I'm going with lots of high energy, high carbs, high protein, power bars, and um, supplements as well to keep me going. So that's going to be my food layout because again, I'm not going to have time or want to have issues with scent or things like that to try and boil water, just take time with that and all those type of things to not only purify my water, but also to give me food and give me energy. So I'm going with as fast and uh, easily edible as possible. A few other items I just want to hit with you real quick. Make sure you got to have some paracord. That 550 line will definitely be needed. I'm sure we're going to have to run into some scenarios with that. Now, I'm not planning on sleeping, or if I am, I'm going to be on alert and probably up in a tree if we're out in the field, or I'm going to be in some sort of environment where we're going to be taking shifts. And it's the jungle, so it's not going to be that hot. I will be taking with me an SOL bivy just as a backup, just kind of help me out, particularly if there's like a, a raining environment and I'm trying to just catch a few Zs if we are there for an extended period of time. And I have found a safe place to hunker down but that's it i'm not planning on taking any sort of sleeping bag or anything else like that and then good heavy duty leather gloves that just picked these up at a hardware store um because of not only um possible you know barbed wire razor wire um heat you know because these a lot of metal items might be out in the sun you know that I, we might be having to move metal items around for barricading different things like that um you know the the simplest cut can lead to infection in those type of in, environments high humid environments with um, these type of scenarios. So good heavy duty leather gloves are gonna be important too. All right, weapon time, firearms. What are we talking about here? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna be taking a sidearm and a rifle. I'm not concerned about very large predatorial dinosaurs, uh, T-Rex and those type of size dinosaurs that may be out there. That's why we're bringing in the guy with the RPG uh, and bazooka. That's why we're taking the guy with the minigun. That's their duty. My job and what I'm focusing on are the smaller predatorial dinosaurs that are around the Velociraptor size range. So with that in mind, based off of past recon footage that we have seen, particularly in Fallen Kingdom's recon footage, when uh, the dinosaur uh, Velociraptor was able to be taken down with a single shot from a pistol at close range, Range. It basically incapacitated the dinosaur at that point. The sedatives had not fully taken effect yet. Um, that would tell me that 9mm and 5.56223 should be sufficient for those size of dinosaurs at close range because that's what I'm expecting to, if I do encounter dinosaurs, I'm not planning on picking them off at a couple hundred yards. That's silly. I don't want my attention drawn to me. It's only in close quarters combat that I'm expecting. So I don't need, in my opinion, higher velocity or higher powered rounds than nine millimeter for my sidearm and five, five, six for my rifle. Now, based off of that concept and our, the footage that we have seen, uh, I'm wanting to go with a Glock 19 for my sidearm. Reason being is if I do find extra stashes of ammo, there's a high probability it's 9mm, and if I find extra um, magazines or pistols, uh, there is a high probability it could be a Glock and a Glock 19 since it is extremely popular. Reliability sake, it may not be my favorite gun to shoot, but it is an extremely reliable firearm and I can still carry it and I train with it regularly so I am comfortable with its design. So that's why I'm going with the nine millimeter and I'm going with the Glock 19 uh, frame is for those reasons. Now, when I go to the rifle, again, the 5.56, I believe is going to be enough as long as I'm carrying my heavy loads to take down at close range a uh, velociraptor or similar size predatorial dinosaur trying to track me down. Um, so I have trained extensively with a 16 inch barreled BCM built 
um, rifle in 5.56 and have loved it and love its reliability, its design, and its overall performance. So I have decided to go with an SBR version of a BCM 5.56 rifle. Reason being is, again, this uh, small and compact as possible so that I can quickly move the firearm if we're in close quarter combat. I'm not expecting long distance shots. And if it's a dinosaur is upon me, I can get underneath it and uh, hopefully save my life in that capacity and not be fighting with a longer barrel trying to get it there. Red dot, not a, lo not a long distance scope and backup iron sights are a must in this design. And another reason for this nine millimeter and 5.56 is weight. Again, if I'm having to run for my life, if I'm rated, weighted down with 308 or 7.62, um, I, there is a higher probability that I might get the, be the last guy in the line to get the first to be attacked. Um, you know, for, uh, the, the last guy is the first one to be attacked in, in when you're running away from something. Uh, but also recoil. I can keep my firearm on sight, not regardless if it's the pistol or the rifle, because I'm using lower um, powered rounds. So I can keep it on target easier because there's a high probability with a fast moving, you know, Velociraptor or something like that, that I'm going to miss a lot. So I need to be able to, to quickly have low recoil to um, actuate targets faster and get the firearm on target quicker. So those are the two firearms that I am going with. And I will be taking three total mags of nine millimeter equaling 45 rounds. And then I'm gonna be taking nine mags of 5.56 totaling 270 rounds of ammo. All right, folks, that's the loadout. Let's go ahead, get upstairs, hop on that helo and get to saving our comrades. Thank you guys so much for coming over today and enjoying and having fun with this loadout of the Jurassic Park Rescue Kit. Uh, check us out on Instagram, all the social media, Facebook, throwing up stuff there all the time. If you're not a current subscriber, I'd invite you to subscribe. We're throwing up stuff like this every single week, fun, entertaining. It's just a blast, guys. I thank you so much for joining today. I uh, would love to hear your guys' loadout if I'm missing something or questions that you may have. You know, there are certain aspects to this loadout that I'm not going to touch on that maybe I'm relying on somebody else to have or that just are a little too minute. I didn't want to go too deep into the weeds. I didn't want to go in the long grass and get ambushed by some velociraptors. So uh, this is just kind of a basic overview. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on it and anything, any items that I may have missed or that you would have added to your kit if you're coming with me on this rescue mission. Finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.